We all know that football is a very lucrative venture. We're sure you've heard what some Premier League footballers earn and just had your mouth drop instantly. But well, while there are players who earn insane amounts, there are also those players that don't earn so much. Of course, this list won't be just a bunch of teenagers who just got promoted from the academy and barely see any playing time. We're actually looking at players who, by how much they contribute to their respective teams, should be earning more, but just don't. Let's get right into it. Number 1. Sadio Mane We need not say much about Mane, surely you know him and you know about him. The former Premier League Golden Boot winner owns only 100,000 a week. And 100k might sound big, but surely it's not. Not for how much the Liverpool number 10 contributes to the club and how long he's been doing that. Mane scores a lot of goals for Liverpool and shows up in a lot of clutch moments for the club for him not to be one of the top five earners at the club. Believe it or not, he's not even in the top 10. Like, how on earth are players like Oxlade Chamberlain, Keita, Milner and even Fabinho earning more than the Senegalese? Mane's brother from the opposite wing, Mohamed Salah, is earning 200,000 a week and he's demanding up to 400,000 a week to sign a fresh new deal with the Reds. On the flip side, with only a little over a year left on Mane's contract, it just might soon be time for a renegotiation and hopefully, Mane finally gets a bump up in his wages. Number 2. Wilfred Ndidi There are only a few defensive midfielders in the Premier League who are as good as Ndidi. The Nigerian is so good at what he does that many Manchester United fans all over the world think that he could be the solution to their defensive midfield problems. And certainly, Leicester City know how valuable he is for them. He hardly misses games when he's fit. These days, he's usually the first name on the team sheet, perhaps only after Schmeichel. But somehow, this level of importance is not reflected in his remuneration. Ndidi earns only £75,000 a week. For contrast, Ndombele earns about £200,000 a week at Spurs. But, well, perhaps it is a little forgivable when you look at the wage structure at Leicester. Even with that amount, Ndidi still makes the top five highest earners at the club. The only players who earn more than the Nigerian are Schmeichel, Vardy, Madison and Evans. OK, so we understand if you want to forgive Leicester for this one, but we don't think you'll be so forgiving for the next one. Number 3. Declan Rice Rice is arguably West Ham's outright most important player. This season? For sure he is. And with Mark Noble hardly seeing any game time these days, he has had to almost entirely shoulder the captain responsibility as well. And for all this, guess what the Englishman earns? Just £60,000. Rice, who has been the target of Chelsea, Manchester United and many other big clubs around Europe for a while, earns just £60,000 a week. Can you imagine that? And unlike Ndidi's case, he's not in the top percentile of earners at his club. A player like Andriy Yarmolenko, who barely sees game time, earns £115,000 a week, which is way more than the perennial vice-captain. And guess what? This is only a recent improvement. Up until the second half of 2020, Declan Rice was earning 6 k Yes, £6,000 a week. That's what Declan Rice was earning in 2020. Absolutely ludicrous. Number 4. Edouard Mendy Mendy is another player we don't even have to talk about. Since Chelsea signed him in 2020, he has arguably been their most important player and one of the three best goalkeepers in Europe. Actually, you can categorically say that if Chelsea didn't sign Mendy last season, they would not have finished in the top four, not to even talk of winning the Champions League. But guess how much the Ballon d'Or Yashin Trophy nominee earns? Just go ahead and guess. £58,000. Edouard Mendy earns just 58k per week at Chelsea. And you could try and make the argument that they didn't know he was going to hit the ground running as he did, so perhaps they were trying to tread carefully, but apparently that didn't matter when they were giving Kepa Arizabalaga a deal. The Spanish goalkeeper, who now just sits on the Chelsea bench for almost every game because of how solid Mendy has been, earns more than 155k per week, which is close to three times what the Senegalese makes. Well. There are rumours that Chelsea want to offer him a new deal which could see him get a 100% bump in his wages. But guess what? Even if that happens, he still won't be earning up to what Kepa currently does. Just wow! Number 5. Rhys James Here is another player whose wages Chelsea need to bump up. Rhys James is a young player but he's fast establishing himself as one of the best right-backs in the world. And what makes him so important is just how versatile he is. He plays brilliantly at right-back, right-wing-back, left-wing-back, centre-back and even in midfield. 
and when he finds himself up front, is a pretty fine finisher and a frequent goal scorer. So how come a lad that brings this much to the squad earns just 58k a week? This is probably the curse of rising from the club's academy. Because the new addition, Malang Saar, who is surely not half as important to Chelsea as James, earns 120,000 a week, which is close to three times his wages. But then, when you consider that Trent Alexander-Arnold earns 180k per week, that, my friends, is more than 300% of James's salary, the academy theory quickly becoming void. Chelsea better review the lad's wages as soon as possible before another club that actually knows his value comes in and snatches this gem up from under their noses. Number 6. Bakayo Saka Over the past year, Saka has become one of Arsenal's most important players. He's one player with an insane work rate and his versatility makes him almost indispensable in the Arsenal squad. The young Englishman can play in defence in midfield and in attack. Not many players can offer you that. This is why it's pretty wild to us that the lad earns a miserly £30,000 a week. To put this in perspective, Martinelli, who has obviously not contributed up to half of what Saka has for the club, earns 90 k per week. Or should we talk about Jadon Sancho, who earns 10 times what Saka does at United? Sancho earns 350 k per week and to be honest, you cannot categorically say that Sancho is half as important to United as Saka is to Arsenal. It gets wilder when you consider the 20-year-old's worth as a player. As of June 2021, he was worth £59 million, but somehow was still earning 30 k per week. You want to get madder? Listen to this. Saka was awarded Arsenal's player of the 2020-21 season, but guess what? He's not even one of the top 15 highest earners at the club. The player whom the club recognised as their most important player last season is the 19th highest earner in the squad. Absolutely ridiculous. Arsenal need to start paying Saka what he's worth. There are a lot more players who are largely underpaid in the Premier League and we sincerely just think that the clubs need to do better with remunerating their most important players. And these players shouldn't be demonised by fans when they demand to be paid what they are worth because we have seen that happen one too many times. If you enjoyed this video, slap a like on it. Also, subscribe to the channel and turn on the bell notification so you don't miss any of our new videos. Catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.